Welcome back guys. Today we're finally gonna add our scorpions to the desert tank over here. I only got this far with the unboxing. I promise I didn't go much farther than just picking up this paper and looking and seeing what's underneath it, okay? We haven't gotten into the actual livestock. So let's go ahead and let's check out what we have here. So, you guys already know, Flip Aquatics, once again, doing me a solid and hooking me up with everything I need for this tank. So right off the bat here, we have a little piece of spider wood, and that is a cool piece. A lot of character, lots of bends in there. That could be a really cool piece. So we might put this in the tank, I don't know, but certainly a good thing to have. What else do we have in here? Let's see, Rob and I talked about this on the phone. Some remineralizer for the shrimp. So my water is pretty soft. We're gonna be adding this to increase the GH and the KH, um, something that I haven't been doing on my tanks, but will certainly help the Neo shrimp that we have. They'd like it a little bit harder than what I can provide them with my tap water. So thankful to have some of that. That'll be fun to start messing around with that stuff. But let's get into the heart of this thing. Really quick before I forget, I wanna show off some of the stuff that Rob has sent me in the past. If you guys have seen the other shrimp videos I've done, you guys might be familiar with this stuff, but we got Shrimp King Foods, Indian Almond Leaves. He sent me a ton of stuff, a lot of other things that you can find on his website. I highly recommend that you guys go check out flipaquatics.com. And don't forget, that you have a bunch of coupon codes that are associated with me. So AquaPros10 will get you 10% off your entire purchase, everything on the site. You can also use the code AmanoPros25 and get 25% off of a mono shrimp if those are something that you want. Now, we're gonna do a third coupon code and at the time of me filming this, I don't know what it is. So you gotta check the description. I'll make sure that it's worth your while. Must be very, very careful not to disturb what's inside. I'm getting pretty good at opening up boxes with one hand. Guys, I do it, I do it enough. As I fail to open this. All right, let's see what's behind door number one. Door number two. Door, <laughs> door number three. Oh baby. Here are our scorpions, guys. We have Black Rose Neocaridinas. These things are awesome. They're tough to see now, but we'll get them drip acclimated in the tank. You guys can take a closer look. That's what we have here today. I thought these would be a good version of a scorpion for the desert tank. And I know a lot of you guys are thinking, Mike, why didn't you do something else that would have also been a lot like a scorpion? I just couldn't do it, guys. Okay, so we're going with the shrimp and these are actually black and I think it's just gonna go with the theme a lot better. Let's go ahead and start the process of our drip acclimation. I've been doing this for all the shrimp that I've been getting and it's been working very, very well for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this little system rigged up here and then we'll take a closer look at the shrimp in our bucket. Wow, look at all these shrimp, guys. Looking so good. Can I get a count on how many there are in here? Like at least a thousand, right? While we wait for these guys to acclimate down here, let's check out our other shrimp tank with the Dream Blues, or the Super Blues as I like to call them, and let's do a little bit of maintenance because as you can tell, I have definitely let this tank grow out. Also, now is a great time to hit the subscribe button if you're new. Guys, if you are subscribed, make sure you check and see if notifications are turned on. A lot of you guys have been messaging me, telling me that you are subscribed and you do have notifications on, but you're not getting notifications. I don't know what's going on with YouTube, but just make sure you have the bell checked as well. All right, so this tank has been doing phenomenally well. It's been just, it's been crushing it. Guys, look at the pinna tophida spreading out growing all over the place. We got a sprig there coming out of the Monte Carlo, which is just doing phenomenal in this tank. I haven't trimmed anything that's been on this Dragonwood. I get, I mean, I, I just, I can't even contain myself. Man, this, this Monte Carlo has blown me away. It's literally just on the Dragonstone. Okay, not in any kind of nutrient substrate. We did put a little bit of the shrimp stratum in this little corner here, but all this stuff up here doesn't have anything. It's just growing straight on the rock. Okay, the addition of liquid fertilizers is what has been keeping this stuff going, but man, it is doing good. And the pinna just, 
I've never have been I've never had Pinnatophyta grow this well. So loving this tank. The baby tears down at the bottom is also doing really, really good. Need to trim it though because guys, I can't even see my shrimp in here. I gotta get down here, I gotta really look to find them. So that's what we're gonna work on right now. Alright guys, the sun has started to set in the desert tank and it is time to add our scorpions. Whoop, they're fast. Alright, first batch going in. Oh, these are so cool. Check these out over here. Man, they have great color too. All right, let's get the let's get the rest of them in here. It's high noon in the desert tank right now, and it's actually been about four days since I added the shrimp. So let's take a closer look down here at the shrimp and the scape itself, talk about what's been going on in the tank so far. I guess the first thing that I noticed was the shrimp's ability to clean up a lot of the loose, dying plant material that was in this tank. Remember, we added in the pogo stamen tissue culture plants, and something common that happens is some of that material can wither away and just melt off. And that's what happened with a few of the plants. As you can tell, we still have a lot of healthy tissue in here, but some portions of, I wanna say almost every piece that we broke off and put in here had a little bit of plant material that was melting away. And so the shrimp came in and they just cleaned all that up. So all the plant material in here looks really healthy and should be set to grow at a decent rate. There was also a little bit of green algae starting to form up here at the top of the rocks, these two pieces right here, well three I should say, this one as well. You can see a little bit of the remnants there, but they cleaned up all the little string algae that was on this main center rock here, pretty clean. There was also a lot more fungi growing on the spider wood here, a typical thing when you add fresh wood to an aquarium, and they have done quite a good job of eating a lot of that. So things are looking good in here, all thanks to the scorpions. They do spend a fair amount of time on the cactuses that we made. Remember that's just a mix of Christmas moss and Java moss tied to the manzanita branches that I broke off and super glued together. And I also appreciate that they hang out up here at the top rocks, very cool. Here's a female hanging out down here in front of some of the alder cones. What I did was I put these in and I also put in some Indian almond leaves, but rather than put in full pieces of leaf, Let's zoom around here and see if I can show you. Here's a good example. I just took a big chunk that had already been soaked in water and I broke them off into a bunch of little pieces and sort of scattered them around the tank. So you don't really see them, but they're there. I thought that would be a good way not to take away from the scape. You know, having a big leaf in there might be kind of distracting, but just shredding it up and sprinkling it in, I think that was the way to go. Both the alder cones and the almond leaves are good sources of surface area that grow bacteria that the shrimp eat. So we definitely wanna have those additives in the aquarium. As far as the shrimp go, let's zoom in here on this female right here. We get a very rich black color and how the camera is picking that up is exactly how it looks in real life to my eyes. Same with these guys over here, or girls I should say. The males do have a little bit less color. They can range from anywhere from a little brown to a little bit more blue. That's just how it goes uh, with this color variant. Here's some more back here. For the most part, they do have a pretty true black color, and that's something that I was really hoping for, and it's exactly what I got. It's a little hard to tell with the camera, but the female here on the right has a little bit more brown in her, but still look really good. Check it out guys, we already have one that's buried with eggs. 
I'm super excited. I can't wait to start seeing some babies running around this tank. I thought the red root floaters would be kind of cool. Looking back, you see it's almost like, okay, bear with me, clouds moving across the desert sky. Not, not really, um, and I didn't add a ton of them. They haven't adapted very well to this tank for whatever reason. I don't know um, what is so different about this tank, why these are growing so well over here, and why they took a little bit of a beating when I switched them over, but I don't know. We're just gonna go with it. I might take them out, might leave them in. I mean, the shrimp do like it though, so we'll play that by ear. I believe I was also gonna touch on the hardware that was on this tank, because I didn't do that in the setup video. So here we have a Phoenix SE. This is not the newest version, um, but rather just the 24-7 SE. Same light that is on the jungle tank right next to it. And we're also running a small 150 Azu hang on back filter. There's some ceramic rings in the back as well as the sponges in the front and I put some Indian almond leaves back here uh, just for kicks. And I also decided to run CO2 on this tank. Not a lot, just a little bit. Running it through uh, one of these cool looking diffusers. And this isn't where this is gonna live. I just wanted to show you what I was using for the CO2 and give you an idea about how much is coming out. So we'll see, we'll see how much longer this setup stays the way it is. I don't really have any plans to change much though. So I'm looking forward to not doing a ton of work and hopefully not having a ton of algae problems, mostly because it is typical to have algae problems, one, when you set up a new tank, and two, when you don't have a lot of plants in that tank. So we're kind of, we're dealing with both of that right now, but so far, haven't had any issues. It also has only been about four or five days, I think, so fingers crossed. Anyway, I think that's gonna do it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the scorpions. Gotta give another big shout out to Flip Aquatics for hooking it up with the scorpions for the desert tank. But guys, you know, deserts don't just have scorpions in them. That's all I'm gonna say. Make sure you're subscribed, hit the notification button so you know when I upload the next video. It could be on the desert tank, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see if we get the next piece of the puzzle in the mail soon. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.